far away. A young karate nerd explores the roots of karate, challenging his mind and body, and sharing his epic discoveries. Jesse Incap is the Karate Nerd in Okinawa. This is the Budokan, another iconic landmark in Okinawa, especially if you're a martial artist or a karateka. And uh, the design is pretty unique. It, it, uh, it looks like a huge, honestly, it looks like a cockroach, a gokiburi in Japanese, but it's supposed to look like a cicada, you know, these screeching things that swarm around the trees in the summer and they come down from the mountains and they shed their shells and they uh, mate and everything in the summer so you can hear the cicada screeching in the trees and uh, somehow the cicada symbolizes uh, happiness and joy especially for kids who like to uh, catch them uh, so they sort of built this Budokan to look like a huge cicada and it's uh, really cool actually here we are the Budokan. They actually have three different floors here for each martial art that you can practice. Look up there. That's the third floor on the top, and then the second floor, and right now we're standing on the first floor. And all you gotta do is just go buy a ticket from the machine, and that gives you two hours of free practice in anything you'd like. You can join a group or practice on your own, or even use the gym if you wanna get your beast mode on. This is the the main dojo where they practice uh, kendo right now. They usually have these big gatherings where different schools and clubs come to practice together and kendo is the traditional way of using the bamboo sword which of course from the beginning was what the samurai did with the real swords but this is the modern equivalent in the budo way. So check it out. They love to scream. Crazy. All right, second floor. This is where they usually have the karate classes or kobudo with the weapon. Look, over there, they're practicing nagi natado, which is the female version of kendo using the sword. Because historically speaking, when a samurai went out to war, his wife would be at home with the kids, right? So they had to defend themselves in case an intruder came. So women in ancient Japan had to learn the naginata, which is like, a, imagine a long staff, and then they attach this huge blade at the end, which is sharp, of course. And then if an attacker came to the house, the wife could just use the naginata to slice the legs off the horse and then defeat the attacker. So today they practice this with uh, these wooden staffs instead. And the idea is like kendo, like using the sword, that you try to hit vital targets on the opponent. And they also compete with this, of course. But even today, it's mainly only girls or women who practice it. This is the... Jesus, they're screaming like monkeys downstairs for the kendo. A anyway, this is the third floor where they have the tatami mats. Check it out inside. They're practicing uh, judo right now and they usually have like judo or aikido and even some uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes up here sometimes. And honestly, this is where I do most of my own training in the mornings because I, I love the, the soft floor because my feet are delicate. Because uh, I think that if you come to Okinawa and only practice with a sensei in his dojo in the evenings, then you're not getting the full experience. You need to come here practice on your own and repeat what the senseis are teaching you when you're here in Okinawa. At least that's what I think. You gotta put your own training in, always. Alright, so we're standing in Kokusai Dori, which means the international street. It's like the number one tourist spot in Naha, the main city in Okinawa. And this is where all the nightclubs are and the shopping and all of that. 
like there are no dojos here but of course around this street there are at least 150 different dojos hidden in the alleys and uh, small ways you know the streets behind this uh, tourist street so if you want to get your souvenirs on just come here and if you want to party of course come here as well This is the traditional Okinawan awamori, which is like the Japanese sake but an Okinawan version. And look, they put the habu, the super deadly snake inside. And legend has it that sometimes they don't get the poison out of the fangs. So in like one in every million uh, jars, there's actually poison left. So it's like an Okinawan Russian roulette kind of thing if you want to drink that. Not for me. This is the Okinawan lion dog, also known as a shisa in the Okinawan language, Uchinaguchi. And they always have one with the open mouth and one with the closed mouth. And they're supposed to help protect against typhoons and give good luck. And they usually have these in front of the entrance of a house or a dojo or on the rooftops. There's more of these nasty snakes in the Awamori. Actually, one cool thing about the Habu snake is that it can attack 360 degrees, which makes it one of the world's most dangerous snakes. Because allegedly, like a cobra can't attack back, but these guys can attack in all directions, like me. all-you-can-eat buffet and this is my favorite post-workout meal it's known as a tabe hodai in Japanese that's the word of the day tabe hodai also known as a Viking probably because we Scandinavian Vikings like to eat a lot but they pronounce it Viking with a B that's the word of the day and uh, we got some tempura here tempura is like a lightly fried not so super deep fried like we do in the west right super good we got some uh, shabu shabu which is like you take these raw things and you put it in this and you boil it and then you eat it we got some uh, chicken some meat uh, a strange egg kind of thing and then some vegetables and then here look this is like a, like a crab super strange and then this of course is the seaweed which is super healthy looks like my grandmother's hair and then we got some sushi fried fish and some egg yummy and i really need this because i just went for a run One of the most popular things here in Kokusaidori is the Beni Imo, which is a sweet potato and it's purple in color and they do everything out of it. In this store they sell some kind of sweet stuff like cakes that they make out of the sweet potato and I'm not gonna lie, these cakes are pretty dry and they don't taste much at all but the sweet potato is what got the Okinawans through the war because it's so, so nutritious. So that's why they almost worship the sweet potato, the Beni Imo here in Okinawa, everywhere. <laughs> We're putting salt on the ice cream, different kinds of salt. It's such a crazy thing, look, they got wasabi salt. <laughs> <laughs> like dynam dynamite salt and um, wasabi salt. Wasabi salt. Wasabi salt. Oh, I gotta try some of the wasabi oh, yeah. salt. The cool wasabi. What else? Green tea. Matcha. 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 Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Look at this crossing. It's not only straight across, but also like diagonally 45. So you can go to that side, this side, or that side. So smart. Let's go. Here we are at Nami Noe Beach. 
Now we know uh, the word actually consists of three different parts. The first, Nami, means wave. No, Ue means above. So, and the name comes from, look, that shrine over there on top of that uh, cliff is the Nami Noe Shrine. It's a Jinja, so people go there to pray. And of course the beach then is named the Nami Noe Beach. And this is like the only beach in Naha, in the main city, that you can go to unless you want to travel outside of the city to other places. It's not the biggest beach, but hey, it works. If you want to get some tan. You see that cave right over there? Uh, there's a story that a sensei told me that the original Bubishi, the Bible of Karate, you know, the fighting manual that was brought from China uh, back in the days, they actually had it, kept it in that cave to hide it uh, from people who wanted to steal it. And then, of course, a lot of karate masters during that time uh, copied the, the Bubishi for themselves. But actually, the original one was hidden in that cave. At least that's how the story goes. Now we're at the Nami Noe Shrine. Let's go in and check it out. Before you pray at the shrine, you have to wash your hands. And they have these, uh, the traditional way to wash your hand. You start with the left hand, then you start with the right hand. And then you're supposed to wash and rinse your mouth as well. I'm not gonna do that with this water right here, but that's basically the procedure so you're clean before you go in and pray. So the way you pray here at the altar is that you, you bow twice, then you clap like this twice, and then you bow once more. And people come here to pray for everything, like success in business or school or uh, health and wealth for the family anything especially when there's like a celebration of someone's for example your 88th birthday the beiju or something like that so they have all of these occasions when they come here to pray in case you don't know the okinawans have the highest life expectancy in the world meaning they live the longest why well, I asked one of my senseis during a previous visit here, why do you live so long in Okinawa? And he told me there's a secret principle related to eating, and it's known as harahachibu. Harahachibu means that you only eat until you're 80% full, not 100 or like me, 120. Instead, as soon as you hit that 80% limit, then you stop eating and then you just walk away. And that way, you'll become over a hundred years old, according to the Okinawans. Walking on this bridge right here is like a trip down memory lane for me. I'm on my way to Akamine Sensei. Akamine Hiroshi is a ninth dan master in Kobudo, the art of using karate's ancient weapons. And the first time I visited his dojo was almost 20 years ago, when I was a chubby, young, junior black belt. I'm really looking forward to this. And this one is uh, yeah.
이 Peace, 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 This is the famous cover. Yes. Okay. Show me again. See, it's a Yes. So peace is mm. To not hit yes. and to not get hit. Yes, yes. Right, right. That's a good philosophy. Yes. Kind of the spirit. It's, uh, yes, it's a uh, me again. It's yeah. very famous. Ah. Yeah. Thank you. Can I keep this? Yeah, of course, of course. Wow, that was such a good practice. I feel like a red tomato in the face and I probably look like one as well. Akamine Sensei drew this cool uh, calligraphy for me which explains a, a very important philosophy of traditional karate. Uh, and what I honestly like most about his training is that he's not too concerned about teaching you tons of new stuff. He doesn't want to teach you new katas and more and more techniques. Instead, he thinks you should improve your technique because once you learn how to use your hips and generate power and all of that biomechanical stuff then that will improve everything you do and if he just teaches new stuff then he knows that people will forget that but we don't forget how to do stuff and that really resonated with me such a cool sensei <laughs>